rejoice, for God is with us, Emmanuel. In the darkness of our world shines God's holy light. Now there is reason to hope, to love, to laugh, to live. God is truly with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Welcome. We're glad to have y'all tonight. If you will, stand with us as we sing our call to worship this evening. O come, all ye faithful. We'll sing the first and the last. Isaiah 9, 2, 6, and 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the deep darkness, on them the light has shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. To the increase of his government... And of peace there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. In John 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not, was not anything that was made. In him was life, and the light was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Luke 1, 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Hail, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and considered in her mind what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. 
and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How shall this be, since I have no husband? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your kinswoman Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Matthew 1, 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found to be with child of the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save the people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. When Joseph woke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had borne a son, and he called his name Jesus. Join me in singing, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Chapter 2, verse 1 through 5. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirius was governor of Syria. And all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of the lineage of David to be enrolled with Mary and his betrothed. 
who was with child. Join me in singing away in a manger. Luke two, Luke two six through seven. While they were, while they were there, the t the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her son, firstborn a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And in that region there were shepherds out in the fields keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord was shown around them. And they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will come to all the people. For to you in, is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloth and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into the heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe laying in the manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying which had been told to them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. Matthew 2, 1 through 11 says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him. And, as, and assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them whether Christ was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will govern my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me the word that I may too. Come and worship him. 
when they had heard the king, they went their way, and lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with his merry mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. Join me in singing the first Noel. Sing to our heavenly Lord that hath made him and earth of naught and with his blood mankind hath brought no well, no well. It always will be. I love what Isaiah says as God read the scripture. A virgin And shall conceive and bring forth a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. So when we look in the manger and see baby Jesus, we see the face of God. We see God. It's not the start of him, but it is the start of his earthly ministry. You know what his earthly ministry is? The Bible says that the Son of Man has came to seek and to save that which was lost. That's me. And that's you. He came to be the Savior of the world. As Denise sang here a couple weeks ago, he came to die. You know, Jesus is the only one that ever chose to die. He chose to die for me and you. I think of Jesus, you know, most time we go from Jesus to the manger to when he's 12 years old at the, at the temple and then on to when he's 30-something with his uh, ministry. You ever thought about Jesus as he began to grow as a little boy? I'm sure that Jesus got out and, 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 and he run and played just like little boys do. And every time his mama called him to come, he came the first time. Why? He was perfect. He would grow to be a teenager. I got a teenager. Imagine when Jesus was a teenager he never talked back to Mary and Joseph. He never gave them them looks. If you've raised teenagers, you know those looks because he was perfect. 
and then he would grow to be a man. I want you to catch this. Each step that Jesus ever took, from a child to a teenager to a young man, led straight to Calvary. That's why he came. He came to die for you and me. And I believe just as there was an appointed time and it's prophesied in the Old Testament that Jesus would be born, I believe there was an appointed time that he would go to the cross and to die for you and me. The Bible says that, that you know, that, that, that he became obedient to death, even death of the cross. And my friend, the death of the cross, the Romans had that down to pretty much an art. They had it where it, would, where it would be intense pain and also it would prolong the dying experience. And that's what Jesus did for you and me. But there's something even more, more, more miserable for Jesus than, than just the nails in the hands and the feet. Because, see, the Bible also says that he that knew no sin was made sin. And there was a point why he hung on that cross. You remember what Jesus cried out. He said, my God, my God. Why hast thou forsaken me? He was forsaken by God where you and I would never have to be forsaken by God. And it was cause of sin. A holy God could no longer look upon his son for he was holy. My friend, Jesus was forsaken by God where you and I would never have to be forsaken by God. He suffered, he bled, and he died alone. He was taken down off the cross. He was taken and he was buried in a bar tomb. And on that third morning, here the, the women came to the tomb. As they got there, they seen that God had rolled the stone away. And there were some angels there. And they told the women, they said, Why seek ye the living out here among the dead? For he is not here, for he is risen. And my friend, indeed, he had risen. He had risen with victory over death, hell, and the grave. And we can look back, and you have to use your imagination a little bit. But you know, we can imagine 2,000 years ago, Jesus lying in a manger, can't we? Can't we see a little baby lying there in the catastrophe, in, 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 a, in a cradle? And if we use our imagination once again, we can see him hanging there on the cross in agony, dying alone. And you know, it, it ought to make us rejoice when we imagine going to that tomb, and that tomb being empty. Because my friend, the empty tomb says it all, don't it? The empty tomb is what gives me and you salvation. And we have to imagine that and to see them things in our mind. But my friend, one day is coming when you and I will no longer have to imagine to see something. For the Bible says that he shall return. And on that day, we shall see him as he is. We shall see Jesus face to face. Because this time he's coming. He's not coming as a humble little lamb. He's coming as a line of Judah. He's coming in power and great glory. And he shall be crowned King of kings, Lord of lords. My friend, that is the gift of Christmas from the cradle to the queen. The Bible tells us that, that we are to show the Lord's death until he comes. One way we do that is, is through communion. Here in a few minutes, deacons are going to come. I'm going to read the passage of Scripture. We're going to have a word of prayer. And y'all are going to come. We're going to take communion. I, I would ask if it's okay, this side come first. When you come and you take the communion, you'll depart this way back your seat and pick up a candle. When this side gets through, we do the same with this side. They go this way. But the Bible says, you know, the Bible warns about us taking of communion haphazardly. It's a very serious thing. Paul, Paul tells some stuff that has happened to people when when, when they would take the Lord's Supper just out of a, you know, out of a, a habit almost. So the Bible says, let each man examine himself. So that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to take a moment. Rochelle is going to play the piano. She's going to play the song Christmas at Calvary. And while she plays, let's bow our head. Let's seek God. If there's unconfessed sinners in our life, this is when we need to deal with it.
has the deacons that's going to help if they'll come at this time. Okay, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning in verse 27, Therefore, whoever, let me, let me back up, verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Brian, will you lead us in prayer? Chad, will y'all start?
please stand with me as we light our candles. As the light from each small candle joins with others, watch it grow from a solitary shining to a heavenly, peaceful glow. Let the glow from all the candles remind you of God's love and that he watches over you from his kingdom up above. We'll leave the church together. The candle's flame will die away, but the love of our Christ, our Savior, will be ours through all our days. Join me in singing Joy to the World. Joy to the world. 